Freemasonry. Its name is legendary. Its origins are steeped in myth. Historically, Masonry is descended from the craft guilds of the medieval stonemasons. Mythologically, the origins of its rituals are found in the monumental building projects described in the Old Testament of the Bible, the Tower of Babel, and the Temple of Solomon. When a man joins a Masonic Lodge, like the ancient craft guilds of old, he first becomes an entered apprentice, then a fellow craft, and finally a master mason. But at the end of the third degree, the new master mason is told that the master's word has been lost. There is a place and time for the master mason to discover that lost word. For the Freemason who is in search of deeper knowledge and enlightenment, there is more, much more and his journey has only begun. It is generally believed that the city of York in the north of England is the origin of what became modern Freemasonry. The first guilds of stonemasons were organized here, possibly as early as 600 AD. King Athelstan, Alfred the Great's grandson and the acknowledged first king of all England, chartered the first Grand Lodge of Masons at York over a thousand years ago in 926 AD. From that day to this, York has been revered as a place of origin of the Freemasonry we practice today. The York Rite is actually a comprehensive term used for three cooperative groups that confer a total of 10 degrees in the United States. There are four Royal Arch degrees, three Cryptic Mason degrees, and three Christian Chivalric orders culminating in the Knights Templar order. The degrees and orders making up the York Rite are considered concordant to the first three Masonic degrees, meaning they confer additional ceremonies that enlarge and expand on the first three Lodge degrees. They're not considered higher in rank or importance than the Master Mason degree, and not every Mason goes on to take these degrees. Think of them more as continuing your Masonic education. They are additional steps on the path to Masonic light. The four degrees of the Royal Arch are the first steps within the York Rite. Since the dawn of civilization, it has been man's desire to make his mark upon the world, to leave something lasting and permanent, for a part of him to survive long after he is gone. As societies began to construct grander and more elaborate buildings, workmen who labored long and anonymously on these structures left behind their own small signature the tiniest record of their own individual role in raising monuments that have stood for centuries. When the great cathedrals and castles of the Middle Ages were constructed in Europe, the stonemasons who labored upon them left the same kind of record of their own workmanship behind. These tiny symbols are known as mason's marks. This is a part of the first York Rite degree, the Mark Master, and it concerns the workmen building King Solomon's temple. The degree of Mark Master teaches the candidate the value of workmanship, honesty, and charity. Like the old stonemasons, every modern Mark Master devises his own individual mason's mark that each chapter keeps on file in a book of marks. The Mark Master degree is followed by the past master and most excellent master degrees. The culmination of Royal Arch Masonry is the Royal Arch degree. Not long after the building of King Solomon's temple, Jerusalem fell into chaos. The people turned away from their ancient faith and pagans and invaders destroyed the magnificent temple. The people of Jerusalem were taken out of Israel to Babylon where they suffered years of captivity. When they at last returned to their city, the rubble of the old temple was cleared away and a new one was erected on the same site. The story of the Royal Arch Degree occurs after the destruction of Solomon's temple beginning with the discovery of a hidden crypt under the ruins and the search for secrets that had been lost to mankind. The Royal Arch Mason at last discovers the Master Mason's word and where it was placed after the death of our Grand Master Hiram Apith. The principal symbol of the Royal Arch is the keystone, the stone that is placed in the middle of an arch for strength and stability. In England where this degree originated, it is considered to be the conclusion of the Master Mason degree and many lodges around the world do not consider a man's entrance into Freemasonry complete until he has received the Royal Arch Degree. 
The next step in the Yorkrite journey is cryptic masonry. The Council of Royal and Select Masters, or Cryptic Council, confers three degrees. The Royal Master and Select Master degrees in particular are based upon the legend of Enoch the Patriarch, the great-grandfather of Noah. Enoch excavated nine underground vaults, or crypts, one below the other, beneath Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, where Solomon's temple was eventually constructed. Each vault contained secrets, and at the bottom of the ninth vault was the greatest secret of all, the sacred, ineffable, unspeakable name of God. The cryptic rite presents three degrees. The royal master degree returns to the days before Solomon's temple was completed. Here the candidate will walk with Hiram Abiff, grand architect of the temple, and his successor, Adoniram, and learn a lesson of mortality. The select master degree partially concerns the deposit of the secrets of the temple into their hidden location in the crypt. As a select master, you will learn how and why the master's word was lost, how the lost word was preserved, and how it was discovered, by whom, and for what purpose. The super excellent master degree concerns the period long after the destruction of Solomon's temple and the exodus of the Hebrews. In 1118, the king of Jerusalem, Baldwin II, organized the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon to protect the Christian pilgrims throughout the Holy Land. These Knights Templars, they were more commonly known, were the first warrior monks who took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and yet were renowned for their fierce courage in battle. Their formation, their deeds, their sudden destruction, and the mysteries surrounding them have created a legend that has fascinated the world for nine centuries. The Templars took the obligations of chivalry farther than any man had before them, pledging themselves both to chivalric virtue and to the monastic vows that governed their faith. These fierce knights were bound by words that sometimes seem to have been lost to our modern society. Duty, honor, fealty, courage. These are words that still ring with eternal truth in the rituals and traditions among today's Knight Templar. The modern Knights Templar is a Christian chivalric order, and it is unlike any other order of Freemasonry. It stands for the noblest principles in individual life and the highest standards of good government. Because of their 900-year tradition and heritage, the modern Knights Templar remain defenders of the faith, just as Knights of old. And it is the only branch of Freemasonry that requires a Mason to be a Christian, or to agree to defend the Christian faith. In keeping with the methods of chivalry, the Knights Templar do not confer degrees, rather the steps in the Templar commandery are called orders. The modern candidate is first made a Knight of the Red Cross, then a Knight of Malta, and finally dubbed a Knight Templar. Most Masons who have experienced them regard the Knight Templar order as the most personally affecting of all the rituals in Freemasonry, and it draws on centuries of ceremony and mysterious symbolism. Today, the Knights Templar of the York Rite display their courage and goodwill by organizing fundraising activities. They support Masonic youth groups, and they raise millions of dollars for medical research and educational assistance. And their world-renowned drill teams are often the public face of Freemasonry in parades and other celebrations. The Royal Arch Chapter, the Cryptic Council, the Knights Templar Commandery, all part of the York Rite of Freemasonry. The York Rite is a fun, diverse, and fascinating path on a Mason's search for knowledge and personal growth. It is rich in symbolism and history and it links the modern Freemason with hundreds of years of history and thousands of years of legend. The York Rite Mason has a whole new world of ritual, tradition, and knowledge ahead of him. The journey that begins at the altar of his Masonic Lodge is a journey that truly never ends. But the next step for a Freemason in search of Masonic light should be into the world of the York Rite.